Time now for a segment we like to call Barry and Brewski brilliantly babble, bloviate, and brainstorm about buzzworthy boom and busts, boom shakalaka. All right, nice Teddy. Job there, Thank you very nice much. <laughs> Pretty much the rest of the uh, segment here is gravy. If uh, now that I nailed that. All right, we're entering week three of the NFL season. No one breaks down film like you do, Teddy. I know you've studied all these matchups, so I want to talk to you about Golden Tate going against your Patriots, an mm -hmm. angry Patriots defense after week two. He's gotten at least uh, 13 targets in each of his first two games here, but Pats have something to prove here. What do you like about this matchup? They do have something to prove. They had trouble last week versus Jacksonville, but I like this matchup with Golden Tate because if you remember Carolina last year, early in the season against the Patriots, free runners everywhere. Mm -hmm. Early season communication problems. They still have that this year, this, this year against teams, as you can tell by Jacksonville. Easy crossing route completions for Blake Bortles. Jim Bob Cooter is going to see that and scheme various schemes to do similar things for Golden Tate, catch and run, one of the best catch and runners in the entire NFL. Golden Tate's a tough tackle. I think he has a good day against the Patriots defense. He's a top five in the NFL in target so far this season. Last two years, Patriots have struggled. They've been bottom five in the NFL in terms of yards allowed to slot receivers. My expectation is the Patriots have no problem scoring against the Lions. They've struggled defensively as well, which means Matthew Stafford's going to have to throw, and when he throws, He's looking to Golden Tate, as we mentioned, 13 targets each of the first two games. Right. All right, let's move over to Will Fuller, a guy that played your Patriots last week. Right. Um, looked pretty good. Or not last week, two uh, weeks or ago. two weeks ago, yeah. sorry. Um, once I nailed the title, obviously, it was all out the window after that, <laughs> all downhill from there. Uh, what are you seeing of Will Fuller and Deshaun Watson in that connection? I like Will Fuller. Again, this is another matchup I like because, for me, it's sort of more of an instinct thing that as Deshaun Watson gets a little bit more comfortable this year that – Will Fuller deep down the field is just something you have to stop. And with DeAndre Hopkins on the other side, I think Fuller is going to be a big part of the plan this week. Deshaun Watson also on those scramble opportunities. If he looks down the field, Fuller is going to be open. He's got that speed. I like him for 50-yard big plays, explosive plays this week. He's got eight receiving touchdowns in his last five games with Sean Watson as his starting quarterback. He caught all eight targets in week two. I thought that was the thing that was most promising. It's not just the big plays, but the fact that he's being heavily involved. It was Hopkins and then Fuller. It wasn't like 12 targets to Hopkins and like two for Fuller and one went for a touchdown. He was fully involved in that game plan. They weren't just using him as a deep threat, but obviously that's a big part of his game. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Another nice game calling coming for uh, Will Fuller. Uh, let's go to some matchups that maybe we're not crazy about this week. And Titans wide receiver Corey Davis has the Jacksonville Jaguars this week. Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye. And I think, yeah, even, even after last week when yeah. they proved what, how they can, I mean, not one-on-one -on -one stop Gronkowski, but still scheme to stop a receiver when they want to. I think they're going to see that in Corey Davis in terms of take him away. He's been productive for this Titan offense the first couple weeks, but I just see this Jacksonville defense targeting him in terms of someone that let's not hit, let him ruin the game. Young receiver, we know. I mean, Bouye or Ramsey are going to be able to handle him. I don't see him having a productive day this week. Yeah, even though he's getting a heavy target share, the fact of the matter is, is that since the beginning of last year, no team has allowed fewer fantasy points to opposing wide receivers than the Jacksonville Jaguars. There's question marks at the quarterback position. Yeah. Uh, you know, as we sit here taping this in the middle of the week, we don't know whether it's going to be Marcus Mariota or Blaine Gabbert under center for the Titans. But either one, whether it's a banged up Mariota or Blaine Gabbert, we don't have a ton of confidence in him being able to get the ball to Corey Davis. Yeah, and target share you're talking about, sometimes those targets get discouraged by the quarterback. Looking out there and you see Mbouye <laughs> and looking out there <laughs> and you see Ramsey and just the targets will become less also. I would agree with that. All right, we can't have you on the show and not talk defense. So let's talk about the Monday Night Football matchup, Steelers defense. It's been a struggle so far this right. year, but they're facing possibly the hottest quarterback in the NFL in terms of Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think most times you'd be like, oh, the Steelers defense against Tampa Bay. Let me start the Steelers, but mm -hmm. you're not crazy about them. Well, defenses are important to my league, especially yeah. the league that I have with my sons because I inflate the stats. I mean, oh, sure, de of defense, course. they can be bigger scorers, you know, so it's very important to which defense that you have, and this is a defense I wouldn't play. I wouldn't play because the lack of coverage ability and how they've had free runners in their defense. And also, I, I just think Fitzpatrick continues. Yeah. I don't see why not. At least I see him continuing to take shots to Deshaun Watson down the field. He's so confident right now that I think that confidence continues. The targets down the field, the scrambles. He's playing great. I, I'm on the Fitzpatrick train right now, so I would not play a Steelers defense, especially in my league. Yeah, and... 
By the way, Tampa Bay can't run the ball, so they become very one-dimensional. And as long as Deshaun Jackson is healthy and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans and emerging O.J. Howard, they have so many weapons in that passing game. To your point, Fitzpatrick, as hot as a quarterback as there is in the NFL. Real quickly before I let you go, though, I have to let you know, I don't know how many people know this about Teddy. You were in four fantasy football leagues. You're a hardcore fantasy football player. Yes. You and I have talked about it many years as we work together, and you're the commissioner of the league that you play in with your kids. I want to tell everyone about the defensive scoring in that league that you set, obviously, because defense have to count importantly. Yeah, so it's my father-son league that yeah. I have. A, a group of friends for, of, my, of my sons, they come in, their fathers come in. We yeah. have a draft, a live draft. It's a lot of fun. But they know those defenses. I mean, sacks are three points, interceptions are two points, tackle for losses, you'll get a point for that. A shutout's worth 30. <laughs> because you get a shutout yeah. in the NFL, they're rare. So you start out with a lot of a lot of points, and then slowly they trickle down as offenses start to score. But I'm trying to teach these kids there's another side of the ball. We also have a defensive player. One tackles, yeah. one point, and then ta sacks and interceptions accordingly. So defenses and your individual defensive player can, can uh, help you win the championship in my league. It's got to be that way. 100%. It's got to be that way. 100%. <laughs> when Teddy played in the NFL, defenses matter. And when you play fantasy football, defenses matter. Teddy, thank you so much for joining us on Barry and Brewski Brilliantly Babble, Bloviate and Brainstorm, Buzzworthy, Boom and Bust, Boom Shakalaka.